Welcome, everybody, to the next episode of Chiefs Focus First and Ten. You're here with JP, Caleb, and Quentin. What's up, guys? Doing good, man. How are you guys doing? Ooh, you know, stressful week coming up. Stressful yeah. game coming up. So, mm-hmm. definitely. That's is. for sure. Everybody's picking against us. So, you got all the talking heads saying that the Bills are going to pull this one out. So, we'll have to see how that plays out. Don't know. Mm-hmm. But uh, they hate us because they ain't us. That's for sure. That's for sure. The one thing I can say is this. The Bills are a very good football team. Um, We are as well. We're not the same football team we were last year because our defense is a hell of a lot better. But it also depends on who shows up. If it's the guys that played the Colts or if it's the guys that played, you know, the Arizona Cardinals. If it's the guys that came out and stomp Tampa, if they show up, mm-hmm. it, it can be a totally different game. We don't play as well as at home. I We've talked about this numerous times. I don't know why. I don't know if it's comfortable. It's just they're too comfortable. I don't know what it is, but they just don't play. At, at, as a, I, I can't say as well, but maybe as a high att- intensity as they should. And I don't they know play they've... down to their opponents, and that's a lot of their home games is to opponents that aren't the best. Well, that's one thing I've noticed. Agreed. So they they have to they have to come out and they have to play hard for four straight quarters. This is not a team you can let up on. It's just not. Mm-hmm. So, um, but we'll just have to see. It. You know, it's it's similar to a prime prime time game. You know, late afternoon. It's not with all the <clears throat> bells and whistles, but it's still a late game. 425 on the east coast so uh we'll just have to see how it plays out and, you know we do have it's Buck essentially a prime time game yeah because mm-hmm. if you on cbs so what happens is is that for a couple games a year the tv networks can basically call dibs yeah on what game gets nationally mm-hmm. put on tv and cbs said that this was going to be their game yeah so mm-hmm. if you aren't in the other markets the other cities that have their teams playing Mm-hmm. This game is broadcasted across the country. Yeah. So mm-hmm. for all intents and purposes, it is sort of a primetime game because this game's going all across the country. Yeah, and if and the Broncos are playing at the same time, they're going to black them out just to play this game. Probably. They would. And I think I mean, that's the reason why the game didn't get flexed because CBS, like you couldn't say, called dibs. Yeah. And since they called dibs, they're not going to change that. And I know that's one thing people were like, why can't it get moved to Sunday night? Well, this is your answer because CBS, like Quinn said, pick this. Yeah. So, I mean, it's an important game. You're going to get a lot of revenue from this. A lot of people are going to turn tune in. Yep. And I didn't know how close Allen was with Mahomes, but they're pretty good friends. Didn't know that. Hmm. Um, hmm. They play golf in the – actually, Kelsey's involved with it too. They all play golf in the summer, and hmm. uh, they're actually pretty good friends. So, I don't think there's any ill will between those two guys. I don't think there's any ill will with Kelsey. It's just a good con- – hmm. you know, it's a very competitive game. Very good competitive game. So it's going to prove a lot. It's a it's it's a playoff game, week six. No matter mm-hmm. how you look at it, and yeah, that's what it is. It's a week six playoff game. So yeah, this game has a chance to have a lot of implications uh, in terms of playoff seating. We know last year, you know, the Chiefs got beat, um, and it didn't really end up mattering because the Chiefs ended up with a better record. But this could be one of the games that ends up being a tiebreaker between the Bills mm-hmm. and the Chiefs. Yeah. So this could mean whether you play a game in Kansas City in January or you go to Buffalo. So, Mm -hmm. you know, while it is week six and there still is a ton of football left to be played, it would be nice, whatever fan base you're cheering for, it would be nice to to have this in your back pocket, sort of a just in case, you know, break in case of fire, sort of uh, when to have in your back pocket. Yeah, yeah. And it's also going to depend on, you know, your divisional um, wins. That's going to be the big thing is, you know, if, if we went out in our division um, and they don't, you know, it's, there, things can change too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And also playing against other AFC opponents. I mean, 
I think that they're probably gonna excuse me, they're probably gonna play maybe some or a couple different opponents, but we'll see what happens. I think yeah. it's gonna be a great game overall. Yeah, I think so too. I think it's gonna be um it's gonna be pretty exciting. Uh, that's for sure. It's gonna, I think it's gonna be a, a high scoring game on both sides. I, I do. I don't think it's gonna be you know, I think it's gonna be probably forty plus points. You know. So you so. think there's not gonna be much defense? I, I just don't know that. Right now, the Bills are hurt on both sides of the ball. Their defense is struggling a little bit. They lost their good, mm-hmm. a good corner. Um, the only good thing, I mean, I guess the saving grace for us is that we do have McDuffie coming back. He's supposed to play Sunday. Bucker's coming back. Oh, you, you, oh he is? Okay. Yeah, Bucker's playing Sunday for sure. Mm. Um, okay. Barring anything that happens, you know, but he's practiced pretty much full participant all week. And You want me to just go over the injury report? Yeah, go ahead. I mean, from what I understand, he's so, playing. So. Yeah, so he was a – I tweeted this out earlier today, so this is a great reason why you should follow me on Twitter. Um, he was limited <laughs> – self, Selfless Shameless plug. self-plug. <laughs> um, he was a limited practice on Wednesday, and today he was a full participant, which is good to see because, as we discussed earlier um, on a couple of our podcasts, the problem with this injury and how Butker plays yeah. is that he comes so hard down on that planter foot mm-hmm. that – it has a te- it had a tendency to swell up again. So we saw a few weeks ago he came out and practice was feeling good, kicked a few times, landed on that foot, and it swelled back up and didn't mm. practice again. Yeah. So when he was a limited participant on Wednesday and today was counted as a full participant, that's good to see because that means between Wednesday and Thursday that swelling didn't come back up. Mm-hmm. So that gives a lot of of hope in terms of him coming back. Mm-hmm. Um, the other guys that were uh, good to see um, practice, uh, Trey Smith. Yes. We know he left the game um, against the Raiders. He, because of an injury, he's been a full participant this whole week. Okay. Um, Frank Clark has been out, was out with an illness. So his, we can just assume that's his stomach issues that he has, his sort of lifelong stomach issues. So that doesn't necessarily mean he won't play. Uh, against the bills i'm not necessarily super worried about that the ones that do, the one that does have me kind of worried is brian cook hasn't mm-hmm. participated he's in the concussion protocol um i he, he's not a guy that tends to make a lot of huge plays but he's a guy that is a good rotational piece he's a good guy to have if you need like a third safety so we know that the Bills are going to try and throw the ball over the place. So the more defensive backs that you can have, the better. And then the other injury is Rashad Fenton. And we were talking about this before we uh, started recording here. He hasn't practiced on Wednesday or Thursday due to a hamstring. And us as football fans know how hamstrings can be, mm-hmm. that they can really drag out. Yep. Yep. Um, McDuffie technically isn't on the injury report because he's still – on IR, he isn't eligible to come back until I think Saturday is when he can come back technically. Well, but he has not. been on the practice field. I thought he was able to come off already. Um, maybe not. Uh, yeah, thought. I think he's eligible to return he's el- now. Yeah, well, because the way it works is that like on the he's eligible to practice. He was at practice today, but he's just not like on the injury report because he's still technically on the. He's yeah. still. It's sort of, we're sort of in that gray area. He will be eligible to play on Sunday against the mm-hmm. Bills. He just isn't on the injury report because he's still technically on IR. Gotcha. <laughs> is that, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So he okay. can still come, he's going to probably play it from a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. He was on, and it, he, the fact that he's back uh, for the last couple of days is good to note because once again, he was another guy that had the hamstring injury. So to be able to practice two days in a row, is a good sign. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is. There's no other significant ones. There's some guys that always end up. Plenty of guys end up on the practice squad, but they've been on. They've been full participants for the whole week. Nick Bolton okay. was on the injury report with a quad injury, but he's been a full participant this whole week. So there's a list of about eight guys that have been technically on the injury report all week, but they're full participants. So it just sounds like, mm-hmm. you know, little bumps and bruises. And but they've been practicing all week, so that's nothing to be worried about. So this is my thinking. As we know, um, Warren has torn his ACL, so I would imagine once that Saturday hits, they're just going to make that roster move and probably yeah. sign someone to the practice squad. That's my thought. Or someone's going to be elevated. 
So that's something I think that everyone should kind of look out for. Yeah, look out for Danny Orton. I mean, uh, Danny Shelton. Mm-hmm. Because it'll make sense in order to elevate him to get the roster up to back down to, to 53. Correct. Um, Because right now he's technically still on the roster, but he's not been moved up. Season yeah. ending IR because he has the ACL injury. So, yes. Yeah, I think that's just because they haven't been able to move uh, McDuffie off of mm-hmm. the IR yeah. yet. So I think this is just sort of the the moving with the rules that the mm-hmm. NFL has set. So I would imagine that Wharton, once McDuffie comes off of the IR, that mm-hmm. Wharton is going to go on the IR. Yes. So I think this is sort of the fiddling around with the numbers just to make mm-hmm. sure that, you know, as soon as During he comes compliance. off, Wharton will probably go on the IR. That's just, to me, that's probably what will happen. Mm-hmm. No, that's fair. That's fair. Hey. I think what we're going to see, it's going to be a lot of stuff that's going to happen. Yeah, definitely. Uh, real quick, did it? Did anybody see the statement that the NFL put out about the Chris Jones incident? <laughs> Which <that>? one? <laughs> there are a the, lot. The, the, yeah, we're not the NFL basically said, you know, we're not changing the rules for anybody. The protocol stays in place, basically. And Okay. Um, we'll see when their revenue gets messed up. Well, that's exactly the problem. And I've talked to a few people uh, over the last week, and they've all said the same thing. They said, hey. Uh, this is not going to be good from a PR standpoint. If you continue to, if do they this. want to be stubborn, they can be stubborn. All right, just you're gonna have to deal with the consequences. Well, you know they've they've got to figure out something with the that crew, that specific crew there, and and Jerome Boger's crew because both they're of them the are worst. Terrible. They're the terror. They're they terrible. are terrible. Yes. Mm-hmm. So they have to figure something out with that. I mean, there's always a limit, and. Honestly, they're still talking about it. It's crazy how many people are still talking about that particular play. No matter what show you go on, it doesn't matter if it's NFL Network or any show that they play or if it's ESPN, ESPN Plus, ESPN 2, mm-hmm. ESPN in Mexico. It's all the same talk. They are bringing up everything about this Chris Jones hit. And then they're also talking about the one on Brady that was called yeah, but same yeah, hit basically. Basically, they the didn't same call hit. none. Yeah, so it, it's it's now become a point that I think the NFL is taking control of what is really going on, and they're, I mean, they're not taking control, but they're taking um, ownership for it, and they need to, from what everybody I've talked to. Now, if they want to continue on after this season with Boger's crew and. Um, What's that guy's name that, that called the penalty? That Calf. Oh, I don't want to get his name wrong. Schaefer's? Schaefer's? No. Look at the ref, the head ref. Um, what is his name? I can't think of it. But anyway. We're professionals here. Yeah, we're really good. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, if they want to continue on next season with them same guys, then that's on them. That They're, they're going to pay for that in the long run. And if there's any more calls like that, during this season, it's really going to put the NFL in it. They're the highest grossing sport in the world. Mm -hmm. They need to stay that way. I'm still, I'm old enough to remember when they had strikes and had other issues and did things. They, you know, the revenue dropped to nothing. It took a long time to get to this point. They can't screw this up. So they could also be in the thinking, mm. well, people are going to watch regardless. So what that's the problem with it. That's the problem is that that's their mindset. people. Unfortunately, even though they're talking, I ain't going to watch. I'm not going to watch the football. They're going to turn the TV on. Oh, uh, I know. Like, I just want to see what's going to happen. Oh, so, they all I mean, said that, you know, how many quote unquote rednecks out there in the world said they weren't going to watch football after the Colin Kaepernick situation. All of them are football mm-hmm. fans again. So <clears throat> especially after the Chiefs got good. Yeah. So it, it look. My point is, is that at some point you have to realize it's still football. You're not ever going to make this t- flag. If you want to be, if you want to be a flag football league, then you might as well just plan on losing all your revenue. So they've got to make a decision on what they want to do on that. End mm-hmm. of it. But um, as far as everything else is concerned, they, they, they have to make changes when it, what here's, here's my opinion on this. And the last thing I'll say, when calls like that happen and they're not reviewable by the New York because they're not, 
that should give the NFL and the referee association basically everything they need to say, okay, wait a minute, maybe we should review this play. Maybe mm-hmm. we should make sure that this isn't roughing the passer because we all know that Chris Jones has a target on his back. He's got a bullseye and it happened to him. What? 2018. Mm-hmm. Happened, almost every year. There's a bad it's, penalty. It's against a bad him. penalty against him. So it has to stop at some point. I mean, if that would have been Brady, he would have been suspended for the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. If he had put, if, if, if that would have been Brady, it would have been a suspension in some, some way or another. But it wasn't. He got a twelve thousand dollar fine, I think it was, or was it more? How much was his fine? He got a huge Jeez. fine. It was ridiculous. I'm not for sure. Yeah, it was stupid. But every they all need to um, <clears throat> realize that th- this is a it's it's a contact sport that's going to happen. Exactly, that makes sense. So uh, the referee's name is Carl Sheffers, and okay. um, what's so that video obviously of him. Um, hitting puberty mid game was going all around Twitter and I sent it to my friend and then we were talking about it and I checked back in our little DM group about an hour later Mm -hmm. and the NFL had taken the video down Mm -hmm. because of copyright issues. Yes. Um, Now some of us probably maybe definitely not me have that video (laughs) saved on another (laughs) form of social media or on their computer so that video may appear back on twitter on the last game of the year against (laughs) uh, the raiders again Mm -hmm. so but it's it's kind of crazy that that video got hit with a a copyright issue when there was a video earlier in the week Mm -hmm. against the giants and packers of a dude on the sideline whose half of his butt was hanging out of his pants while the, mm-hmm. while a trainer was working with him. And that video didn't get copyrighted. And I will say this too, Quinn, the video where Mahomes is yelling, I'm here, that got copyrighted. But you so, can still find on Twitter, so it, it makes no sense what they're taking down. What they don't understand is that there's groups out there that they could take it down all day long, but if you have copyright, uh, if you have copyrights for that stuff, they can't really take it away from you. Mm. So there's people out there that have, you know, copyright or co- copyrights, I should say. Mm-hmm. And actually we're one of them. Uh, we actually have copyrights to a lot of things that we can put up if we want. And it's just getting bigger. So it, it's kind of stupid to, um, for them to take it down given the fact that everybody mm-hmm. in the free world has already seen it. So, and everybody still has it. It's not like it's not saved somewhere. As Quentin said, you may not, may or may not be one of those guys that has that saved somewhere. Mm-hmm. So, you know, um, it's, they, it's not like it, people don't know. And ESPN still showing it. <laughs> uh, well, NFL, my question it. is, why would they take that down of all videos? Because it puts the ref in a bad light. Yeah, yeah I, I would they're... assume that maybe the the ref union stepped in and, and didn't like what was on there. And you know the 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 union has a right to try and protect their their people. So you know I don't have a necessarily have a problem with that. The thing is, is weird that mm-hmm. that video would get. It's just weird that it happened. I've never seen that happen before, where it's something that's not really. I mean, it's embarrassing for the guy, but mm-hmm. you know. I well, I've been I've been doing podcasts and stuff. My my voice is cracked in public. I did public speaking for for years, and it's just like everybody has a voice crack every once in a while, you happens. know, especially when you've been mm-hmm. talking. And so for that to happen in the NFL to step in and copyright it, it's just kind of crazy. And well, the one thing that and JP, I don't mean to interrupt you, but no, one thing fine. that makes sense to me is that the refs are part of the game. I think we're at the point where they need to be held to a higher standard. In my opinion, so yeah, if a video is going to go out, fine, that's normal. Uh, more importantly, I feel like there's calls they need to. There needs to be a system in place. If we're going to come down hard on a player for not catching the ball in the end zone for a touchdown in the game, we got to be just as hard on the official. In my opinion, if they're not going to throw the flag, that's going to cause the game to win for one team or lose for another. I just feel like I understand they're trying to protect the refs, but I feel like there comes a point where you're protecting the refs too much to a fault. 
They should have press conferences just like everybody else. I mean, yeah. we see with these players that are making all this money and their people want to come hard on them. Hey, players are humans too, just like refs. So they should be the ones, honestly, that should have those press conferences. Not those ones where they get a talk in a room and there's a written out statement. No, yeah. they need to be in front of the cameras. In my opinion, personally, because some of these calls over the past few years and JP, you and I've seen them, yeah. they've been utterly just terrible. And I just, I understand the one truck protect the rest, but it comes to a point where your calls you make have actions. Now, was it right? People yeah, were throwing stuff. No, mm-hmm. it wasn't right. Do I understand why the fans got mad? Yeah, I wouldn't go that far. But that was the first time I ever heard Arrowhead get very loud. And people that we knew, JP, were there saying that yeah. they basically put the fear of God in that referee crew. That, that the referee crew. So, I mean, I don't know. I just feel like it, times are kind of changing when it comes to officiating. I don't want to move then move to the robot refs because I feel like that's even going to cause an, an issue as well. So Because well, technology it, it doesn't will. work when you want it to. Exactly. And it will. But here's the thing. That's why you have a group of people sitting in New York that are going every, going over everything frame by frame. But it seems like they're not even there half the time, though. And that's the problem is that they're they're told. It's like, what? are they there or are they not? Because didn't you tell me there was one game? Apparently, New York was supposed to say something, but they didn't. You told it me something during, like that. It was during um, the when the refs were out. They had the substitute refs in for uh, COVID. They and missed something. We're supposed they, to say us, and they didn't do it. It was us yeah. and the Cowboys that got nailed. And. Mm-hmm. All these the the problem was is that a couple of these refs, well, not a couple, more than a couple, hadn't even refed an NFL game. One of them had did mm. had won ten years prior. So yeah, they were so fixated on all the other games that were going on that didn't have substitute refs in that mm-hmm. they didn't pay attention to the ones that did, and that mm. caused an uproar. So. It, it just became a nightmare. That was a nightmare year. I mean, it was, you know, of course, but I think that was the past interference year. It was. It you was could a challenge. Passive, yeah. And it was so bad that even the Cowboys, which they should have won that game hands down and didn't. And it was simply because nobody stepped in to even check. They mm-hmm. didn't even look. Uh, they were too fixated on the other 14 games. That's games. why I just get it to with New York. They're supposed to step in and they don't step in half the time. So no, like, what's the don't. point of having them there? It's true. And they, you know, supposedly they hired more people and brought in more people to, to, you know, to, to frame this out and, and really pay attention, but it's not doing any good at this point. So, and you know, I told you that day I made a phone call on that when it was our mm-hmm. game and I lost my mind on that guy. And he said, I was expecting this call. Uh, he knew it was coming, but I have some breaking news. What, bro? what happened? Um, another woman has filed against Deshaun Watson. Oh boy. Huh. So well, we'll see what happens. Is she there. totally yeah. separate from the first 22 or is she one of the 26? It's the 26 new mm-hmm. lawsuit. So, so it's somebody new. Yeah. So there's probably gonna be more coming next few weeks. Okay. Hmm. You know, at some point it's like, yeah, I mean, I mean, look, they're just going to keep coming at this. I, well, I know this isn't this isn't what people tuned into here, but you no. know, this is if you're listening to this on Friday, you may not have not heard the news by now. Yeah. So I do think it's in. You know, it is it is sports news. So and here's it's the just, thing: we're a sports show, so um, um, I want to get back. I just you know that breaking news. We've given our opinions on everything about Deshaun Watson. I don't know if we can add anything new to this conversation, but I do think that when stuff comes out. I think it's important to tell people. Definitely. Um, so definitely there's is. that. I don't want to, I don't want to say anything new about it because my opinion's out there. Yeah. Um, the, there's not much to, you can really say. I mean, it, it is what it is. It's going to, it's, I don't think it's going to stop. And honestly, whether it's true or not, you know, with all of them, who knows, but um, it is, it is what it is, but regardless, <laughs> getting back to uh, important. Sorry. Things. I just, it's no, 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 important. it's fine. You made me it think is, the Chiefs traded important. for Saquon. You got me happy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh-huh. <laughs> man, I have been on that dude's bandwagon for so long. Uh, my good. fantasy team is uh, riding the Saquon Barkley train right now. He is the reason uh, that I'm winning. So, yeah. okay. Keep it the up, Saquon. Beast, man. And look, uh-huh. l- let me say something really quick about off topic of the Chiefs really quick. You know, everybody is giving that head coach of the Giants all these props for the way the offense is running. 
has absolutely not nothing to do with him. He's not calling one it's play. Kafka. It's Kafka. He's got 100% control of that offense. So put his name, give the man the respect he deserves because he is making that team. Mm-hmm. It's that simple. I wish to God he would have stayed here. Well, but, you know, things happen and it just is what it is. But he is making that team. That and the fact that Saquon is back to being Saquon, which it's, you know, for two years he was injured. I mean, mm-hmm. the guy's an animal. He's a beast. He's, he's, he's really good. Probably, that, in my I opinion, best running him, back in football. I'm like, there's no way they're going to trade in the top five to get him. Oh, no. And honestly, he's the best running back in football. I don't now, care. Who, this is my there. question. If you're the Chiefs, is there a move you could possibly make? Would you guys add Saquon or would you add a defensive player on another team if you can make a move for him? What would you guys oh, think? Man. Well, since a defensive player is so broad, I would add, you know, a, a defensive pass rusher. Sure, yeah, pass but rusher. Would you try to get pass rusher or would you rather have Saquon because, running back? Because a pass rusher is more valuable to me than a elite running back because I have Patrick Mahomes. And that's fair. The fact Patrick Mahomes can pick up the slack on a um, on a less elite pass uh, the passing team, sort of pass catchers and a running team, mm. than a pass rush that can get consistent pressure when I need to only blitz with four guys. It's not even blitzing; it's just rushing with four guys. So, yeah, I think mm-hmm. that we have a guy sitting in the waiting, and I don't know why he's not out there, but. If with this with the team and the practice team that we have right now, if I had my my chance to go after Saquon because of his abilities, not just from the backfield, but as a pass catcher and a blocker, and his, his he's just got vision that's unbelievable. I would almost want him and just say, you know what, we've got another guy that we can put in as a pass rusher. Let's just go ahead and grab him if we can. But that's just me. Mm. Um, last week with what I've seen out of Clyde again, to me, he, he did nothing in my opinion. He's going to have a spurts. He's going to have his spurts, but he's not, he's not a star. He's not, he's not a running back one. He's just not, he should not. It's in my this, opinion. the chiefs are by definition, a running back by committee. And as long as you're able to get production out of it, yeah, it's not, you're not hurting my feelings. Um, mm. Production last seems week was to dismal be compared to except committee. week two, what th- three uh, except against the Colts, Colts, you know, where that was just an embarrassing performance by everyone involved. Um, this team has been able to move the ball in the rushing game uh, effective enough in the run game. So I don't have a problem. It, you seem to be able to give it to the hot hand. So that's productive because mm-hmm. you're not just sticking with a guy who obviously is having a bad day. So you're not doubling mm-hmm. down on a single guy. And I think that allows the team to be able to keep all these guys on the roster. Like last yeah. week, or I guess against the Raiders, you know, we saw them give the ball to McKinnon. And obviously he was the guy that provided the spark to the team. And yeah. if you run the ball with Clyde uh, against the Bills and he's able to to move the ball effectively, I've got no problem with you continuing to give the ball to him. And if he's not, and you hand it to Pacheco, and all of a sudden he busts one, mm-hmm. keep giving it to Pacheco. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. That's true. I mean, but we, you know, we're a wide receiver by the committee right now. We don't really still to this day. I mean, technically, I guess we don't have title, a really one. No, I mean, technically, yeah, our number one is, is a tight end. Mm-hmm. Well, it is, but I mean, technically, by if you want to go by titles, I guess Juju's supposed to be number one wide receiver. Um, it was Hardman, then it became Juju on paper but Parvin is not number one no um he was number one until we before we had anybody else but and i'm not just slamming hardman i'm just saying that's just he played good last week so uh i'm not gonna slam him for anything it's just we we don't we've we haven't had a true number one wide receiver other than tyreek hill and travis kelsey now let's talk about tyreek real quick he's got another quad injury hmm Weirdly enough, you know, he's injured again. So the one thing I can say is last week when Hardman came out of that game and you could tell he was in an extreme amount of pain, mm-hmm. they have a, a piece in his boot or in his, his cleat that is keeping, it's like a, similar to a cushion and it's keeping some of the pressure off of his heel. It moved and he slammed down on it and it 
really hurt the ball of his foot. It didn't hurt the mm. heel so much. It would just shift it in his shoe. Mm. Uh, he was in an enormous amount of pain, came out and still made some good plays after the fact. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to slam Hardman. He look, this team is like Patrick said from the beginning, it, the ball's going to get spread around and no matter how it gets spread around, it's really not anybody's business and who cares as long as it's productive. Mm-hmm. And that's what we are right now. We're a productive football team that is learning and growing with each other. And are you going to have your ups and downs? Of course, you got a brand new team, essentially a brand new football team. Mm-hmm. All new wide receivers, pretty much your eight, eight of your guys on the defense are new. Half of them are rookies. Mm-hmm. So you got to give them some slack. You know, they're still winning. They're still ahead, uh, top of the division. And look who they've got. Mm-hmm. I mean, so they've are, gone through the stretch pretty well compared to what they could have done. This is a so, tough schedule. I mean, it's like ranked yeah. second hardest schedule in the league. Mm-hmm. So I'm not complaining. I mean, yeah, we had a slip up and, and really, to be honest with you, I think the Colts game was just really bad play calling. In fact, I know it was, it wasn't so much of the players. It was the calling was horrid when the execution and then the special teams didn't help. No. I mean, when you look at, and you got to think about it from this perspective, when you know, as a player that these calls that are coming from the coach are not working, but yet you're sticking to that same game plan. It brings you down. Mm-hmm. It brings you down as a team. It brings you down as an individual. It brings you down as a group. And mentally, you're just not all there and you don't know how to execute because you're not happy with what's being produced. So that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, we don't have to worry about it after this year. And maybe we don't have to worry about it so much going forward. But until that day comes, as long as we're still winning and, and Patrick's still doing his thing, as long as we got him, I am not – Never concerned about making the playoffs. I'm mm-hmm. never, you know. All I say, the Chiefs just need a shot, and they could win. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Give them a chance. Yeah, 13 seconds. Exactly. Oh my God, did you, uh, Josh Allen's? That when they interviewed him, they asked him. They said, um, you know, is, is there anything that you are sick and tired of hearing about, and you don't want to talk about anymore? Because yeah, I'm really tired of that 13 seconds crap. He says, I don't mm-hmm. want to talk about that anymore. Because that's well, all I've heard for a year. Um, well, he's going to have to deal with it. He's going to continue to deal with it until they beat the Chiefs in the playoffs. Yeah. You and know, even this, then, I'm still going to say it. I mean, yeah. that, that's what's going to happen. It doesn't because – and here's the thing, is that this game matters more to the Bills than it does the Chiefs. Yeah. And here's why, in my humble opinion, is that the time that the Chiefs lost to the Bills, it happened in Buffalo. The Chiefs are 4-1 and one against Josh Allen. Yeah. And – the Chiefs have beat the Bills in some pretty tough games here in Arrowhead. And I think coming into this stadium, you need to be able to convince yourself that you can beat Kansas City in Kansas City. Because if you lose again in Arrowhead and you have to come back to Arrowhead in the playoffs, mm-hmm. I know these are professional athletes and everything, but that's morally got to be tough to overcome. Oh, oh for sure. If, if you even, So if, if the Bills win – on Sunday and then they have to come back here again for the playoffs. I think just psychologically you can say, okay, we've done this here before, but if yeah. you lose again and you're five and one against Kansas city and you have to come back to arrowhead and I, I just don't know how you can make that internal decision about, yeah, we can do this here. And I know these are professional athletes and these are some of the most competitive people in the world, but it doesn't matter. I Doesn't just think matter. there's there's going to be some of that doubt inside mm-hmm. of your head that it's like, mm-hmm. man, that, that would just be tough to overcome. It yeah, is. That's fair. It is. And here's the thing. You know what you're going to hear? It, it, and this is what I was. I was talking to somebody else the other day about it. And I don't remember who it was at this point, but uh, you're going to hear one of two things after this game. OK, you're going to hear if the Chiefs win, it's because the Bills were injured. If the Chiefs lose, then. Mahomes a fraud. Mahomes a fraud. So it's going to be one way or the other. It's never going to be, it's always going to be something. And it's not, I'm not talking about fans. These are analysts and ex football players and, you know, all these pro athletes and these, you know, people that just want to talk to talk. It's, it's never going to be just, okay, well, you know what? We straight up beat them. If it's an injury issue because bills have injury, injured players, then they're going to say, well, it's because this guy was out and that guy was out. Well, you know what? 
that's your fault because you didn't build depth. If you don't have depth, depth to fill the shoes, that's on you. Mm-hmm. But nobody looks at it that way. They look at it as, oh, wait a minute. So we're, we lost because our coach and our scouting crew and our GM wasn't smart enough to bring in depth and look at those guys that were seventh round draft picks that day that became day one starters. Mm. They don't look at it that way. So, you know, uh, not Peter Schrager, but the other one, um, Paul Brandt. Yeah. Huge bills fan. He's a huge bills fan, but you know what? He, I watched a, a YouTube video of him talking about it actually yesterday. And he said, look, you know, no matter how you look at this, he said, this is going to be a phenomenal game for two reasons. One, you got Josh Allen on one side. Two, you got Patrick uh-huh. Mahomes on the other. Skill set wise, they're different in many ways, but you also have to take into consideration that it's a game that everybody wants to see. It's between two powerhouse quarterbacks, probably number one, and he worded it probably number one and number two in the league. Mm-hmm. And he said, with Mahomes being number one because of what he's done and what he's able to do. He's, mm-hmm. The fact that he's brought in a bunch of guys that had really no numbers, rookies, and everybody else, and has turned this team into a winning franchise with a really tough schedule. And then you got the Bills on the other side that have Josh Allen and this guy and that guy. And it's it he his analogy of it was better than most that he really comes out to say or, or, or it says in, in general because he's mm-hmm. a huge Bills fan. But he said, either way it goes, it's going to be a phenomenal game. And whoever wins, it's, it's going to be good for them. It's a playoff game. You know, really, however you look at it, it's a week six playoff game. So I like the fact that he actually said something nice, you know, given the fact that we, he said, we have the best head coach in football. We have the best quarterback. You know, then you got, tra- and he goes, then you got Travis Kelsey. If you can't cover up Travis Kelsey, then you're going to lose. And that's something that I was like surprised that he said, because normally he, in, as much as he jocks Travis Kelsey, it's the fact that he's now acknowledging the fact that there's nobody better than him mm. in this league as a tight end. There's just not 25 yards, four for seven, four touchdowns, period. End of story. So mm-hmm. if, if, you know, he's old, reliable, that plays very young. I'll just that's put true. That. I mean, the over-under for this game is 54. Yeah. Uh, if I lived in Kansas, uh, I would definitely take the over on that because that means 27 a team is 54. Mm-hmm. And I think this could easily go into the 40s. Yeah, I think so, too. That's what I was talking about. It could easily go into the 40s. Now, let me ask you a question. I don't know Missouri laws because I haven't lived there in uh, 10 years. But you can't go on MGM bets and bet you can't go on DraftKings and bet you can't bet an online on online at all because you live in Missouri. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. In order to, in order for those apps to work, you have to have geolocation on. Mm. Uh, I see. So in order now you can literally, if you live on state line, you could literally walk across the street and gamble Mm. because then you're in Kansas. Okay. So they basically use it by that. Okay. That's what I was curious about because I know that drive. Yeah, and I have sorry. friends that drive to Iowa or Kansas. Uh, that's what I now. had when I was yeah. up at when I, up in Maryville, um, which is in the northern part. I mean, the college is called Northwest Missouri State University. So, I had friends that would go and drive up to Iowa, which is not a far drive, and mm-hmm. they would place their bets, and then they would come back. Yeah, and that makes sense to me. I mean, Kansas is a lot closer, you know, for you guys now, or for, especially Caleb. But I um, mean, basically, cross the white line, and you're in Kansas. But like here, we we have one of our um, promotions is DraftKings and I can't get on their app. I can't use DraftKings. I can't use S- SSG pr- promotions either because they are banned from Nevada. Mm. We can only bet with the casinos that are here, like station mm. and MGM, you know, guys like that, but we cannot. Mm. Bet oh, with- MGM has an app. Yeah, I have it. Not that I've ever used it, but I have it. Um, but I was just wondering because we had a, you know, one of the guys that um, that is on our, through our website asked us to get into a contest or something, but I couldn't do it. So it was strange that it, I, I was just curious as to why, but then I did, when you said that, it made me think, okay, well, it is banned from Nevada. So, well, there's one very, thing I know uh, they're trying to get betting in Missouri. I don't know how long it's going to take. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's been like they're trying to get it on the on the like docket during the next Missouri session. Because the mayor of Kansas City wants it, but then the governor's like, no. So we'll see. We yeah. will see. So. I do know enough about that governor not to really put too much stake in what he says, but let's, this is not a politics show. Um, moving forward. So um, Quentin's got some, believe it or not, to my. Yeah, you know? I do. I do. Um, so this is the, this is a stat that I wanted to bring up. Um, so Josh Allen accounts for 84% of all of the Bills offense. Yeah. He obviously leads the team in passing, but he also leads the team in rushing with yeah. 225 yards, which is mm. two more yards wow. than what Clyde has. Wow. Uh, for comparison, Patrick Mahomes accounts for 76% of the Chiefs offense. Huh. Okay, so that, I think that's a pretty that's a pretty stark difference. So, I mean, I think that's with, you know, outside of the margin of error yeah, right there. Yeah, I'd say. Yeah. So knowing that and knowing what uh, Josh Allen has done in the past, uh, believe it or not, Josh Allen runs for more than 45 yards against the Chiefs on Sunday. No, I don't Ooh. believe it. I don't believe you it. You think they stuff him? I think they do. I don't know. If- this is a tough one. 45 yards. Will he run for more than 45 yards? I'm gonna have to say yes. The reason why I think he's gonna break a couple huge runs, and I think he's gonna get a couple mid runs. I think he might barely get them, barely get over that, and get into the fifties. I, I think it possibly can't happen unless the defense goes on complete lockdown. But I just feel like what our rushing defense as a whole has been kind of struggling, and we don't have Willie Gay right now. I think he might get, get the over on that. Not high, but I think he's gonna get in the fifties. Oosh, man, I can't see it, but. Um, I think that's one thing the Chiefs are going to try and really uh, manage um, from that point. But what do you they think? They got Quentin? to. <clears throat> yeah. What's your opinion, Quentin? I think if you would have asked me this even two weeks ago, I think that I would have said that Josh Allen uh, has the potential to go over that that number. But the way guys like Darius Harris have come in and – uh, the way Nick Bolton has come out and play, and yeah. he's just fantastic. Mm. If it weren't for Chris Jones, Nick Bolton would be the best player on this defense. Yeah, mm. and that's to me that's not a hyperbole. Um, mm. so I think that the, I think that the Chiefs are going to be able to hold them to that. I also think what's going to go into play here, as I sort of talk this out with you guys, I think that Josh Allen isn't going to look to run a whole lot because mm. I think he's just going to keep looking down the field because he's going to just want to get the big plays. Yeah. I think he's just going to consistently want to throw the ball down the field. That's fair. And I think that there's going to be a lot of incomplete passes on like some deep posts or corner routes when the ball was available thrown to the flat because he's just going to want to continue to throw the ball downfield. And we've hmm. seen Patrick Mahomes do that. Yeah. You yeah. know, this is not, I don't want to sound like I'm dogging on, on Josh Allen there. Cause I'm not, I have a lot of respect for Josh Allen. Uh, I think he's a really good quarterback. He's probably the second best quarterback in this league right now. Um, yeah, I, I think it's. I think that the Chiefs are going to be able to not only stop him to do that, but this is also. I think he's his play style for this game is going to limit the amount of rushing yards he gets. And to add to that, right now that is his mo. So through five weeks, he has thrown more deep balls and looked to go downfield more than he's done anything else in five weeks. So I think you're right. I think that's going to be what he's going to try and do. And he's going to try to try to exploit, mm-hmm. you know, a couple of rookies. And I don't know if he's watched any film, but it's going to be pretty d- difficult to d- exploit our rookies. So mm-hmm. you may get one, you may get two, but you're not going to get them all. And mm-hmm. uh, that's going to be, that's, and, and I don't think he has, to be honest with you, I don't think he has wide receivers like a Mike Evans or even, you know, anywhere i don't think he has anybody that close so I, mm-hmm. you could argue what a great transition jp let's go baby because my next believe it or not is i have talked about in the past how the chiefs have let up some top wide receivers mike evans and uh mike williams who have gone and have allowed a uh, hundred yard games throughout the year <clears throat> so you're thinking oh quentin he's gonna say believe it or not Stephon Diggs gets 100 yards. Oh, on contraire, my friends. 
my believe it or not is uh, will the Chiefs allow Gabe Davis, a guy who has a hundred yard game plus last week and in the playoff game over a hundred yards. So believe it or not, Gabe Davis gets over a hundred yards. I have a question for you, Quinn. Does Gabe Davis play a lot of his uh, snaps in the slot? Or he what does he to. mainly line up I as? Think he does. Do you know? I think he does. I think he plays I've, a lot. Because I feel like if he lines up in the, in the slot, Snee's going to shut him down for the most part. He appears on the edge. It kind of depends on who's going to guard him. Do you there, know by any chance? I believe they're just one of those teams where they don't keep guys at one spot. Mm-hmm. I think they're one of those teams. I know like Diggs get moves into the slot a lot. So I would yeah. assume if you're moving Diggs around a lot, you're moving your other guys around a lot because mm-hmm. there's only a couple of spots you can put your wide receivers. Mm-hmm. So I think Gabe Davis is more of a, he, he, he plays, if you went into percentages, his percentages are higher in the slot, but that's, I think it depends on who you're playing also. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but I do believe that his percentages are more in the slot. Mm-hmm. What do you think, JP? Do you say, believe it or not, you know, it's really tough, but I'm going to say probably so. And the reason I say that is just because I think they're going to put so much emphasis on digs. And it's going to you know, look like we said a million times, you can't cover everybody. They don't have everybody. Um, they've got two really good wide receivers, but I think that I think he may get uh, he may get over 100 or at least 100. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say not. I think Diggs is going to be good now. I think he's going to get in problems with upper 60s to 70s, but I don't see him getting 100. I, I just don't. The defense would absolutely have to collapse if that were to happen, in yeah. my opinion, personally. It would just be a field day where Josh Allen can just do whatever he wants wants to do. Yeah. What do you think, Quentin? Um, I, I see this sort of like that. I think that, honestly – there's going to probably probably Gabe Davis and um, Stefan Diggs have a lot of yards in this game because when you're scoring 30 plus points, yards got to come from somewhere. Mm-hmm. So there's a pretty good chance that both Gabe Davis and Stefan Diggs have over a hundred yards just you because they're going to give up to they you think they're going to give up over a hundred yards on both of them. Uh, yeah. I mean, I could totally see it happening. If you're going to score 40 plus points, 38 mm-hmm. points, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna have 300, 350 yards passing. Mm, true. So, those yards got to come from somewhere. Yeah. So I think it's totally realistic to believe that that Gabe Davis comes out and, mm-hmm. and gets 100 plus. You got to think too. He's not a guy that comes out and gets like a five yard, ten yard, seven and a half yard catch. He's a big mm-hmm. play guy. Last yeah. week we saw him get a 98 yard touchdown. If you start the game off in the first drive and get 98 yards on your first reception, you better get a hundred yards. Mm-hmm. Like that's just the way it, that's the way it has to be. If you mm-hmm. end the game with 98 yards and you had one catch for 98 yards, I you just you got to go sit down on the bench for the next game because that's just disappointing. Well, <laughs> hey, look, look, let's think about something though. You realize that Watt was out of that game, right? So that game last week, and I don't know if anybody knows the the statistics with TJ Watt being out of the game. They're 0 and 8. Hmm. They're 0 and 8 with him not playing. So given the fact that he was out of the game, which he is a, a beast, he creates so much pressure. I think that that gave way for other players to be able to, you know, somebody has to fill in. And if you don't have that depth yet as a Pittsburgh Steeler group, that's trying to rebuild, then you may end up with something like that. Now, Mm -hmm. with that being said, we have a different defense Mm -hmm. and I think Josh Allen, you know, we do know that they like to blitz the, the bills do. Um, I don't know if they're going to blitz us or not. One analyst seems to think that they're going to blitz us a lot uh, on their on the defense on the defensive side, and if they do, that's a mistake on their part because look, Mahomes is the king of you know getting out of the blitz and mm-hmm. um, making positive plays out of it. Usually, well, ninety nine percent of the time. Now, if we decide to blitz Allen, 
because we want to keep him from getting that 50 yards or if he decides he wants to take off running and you've got a spy on him all the time that's good, what they need mm-hmm. a good spy then you should be okay with keeping him contained i'm hoping that's what they decide to do and a couple of corner blitzes won't hurt especially like sneed that sneaks up behind you and put you on mm-hmm. your back um or on your stomach just depends on which way you're facing but uh i, I would hope to think that Mm-hmm. You know our defense is going to step up and and really play hard against a team like this. Let's just hope and pray that's what happens. Mm-hmm. And I, I see what you're saying. That's a fair point. Yeah, I mean you got to look at it from a different you know strength of schedule and and player um, availability is huge. And if you don't have the depth, and you, you <clears throat> look, I mean there's not too many people that can go fill fill in watch shoes. And mm-hmm. whoever they brought in was dismal at best. Yeah, they're they're just gonna struggle for a while, and that's why you and like we say, the Chiefs, you they have depth, and because of that, it's gonna allow them to do a lot of different things in order to help the team in case someone goes out. Darius Harris, a prime example, he's been on the team for a couple of years. Um, he's playing now as a starter, and Willie Gates plays, and he's been doing very well. Very you need well. players like that to do that. Yeah, and we we saw what happened when you know Wharton went out, and things didn't look that great against the rush. You know, they ran all over us for a while, but. If they, I'm still on this Danny Shelton train and I won't get off of it. And I don't know why I've yet to figure out or even get an answer as to why he's not been brought up yet. I don't know what the problem is other than he was injured, but I think at this point it's Hmm. time to bring him up Hmm. because he's man, you put him next to Chris Jones. Holy mother of God. That is a, that's, that's just, a lot of mass. That's a lot of mass. Mm-hmm. And 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 look, he's fast as can be for 300 pounds. I mean, he's mm-hmm. a big, wide. I mean, he takes up two spots, maybe three. So I would love to see him on that line. Let's just hope it happens. But, um, you know, it is what it is. Now, what's your next one? You got one more, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I always do three. I do my homework here. I know you do. Um. So <laughs> we've got... Clyde has averaged uh, 44.6 yards, rushing yards per game. Let's just round it up to 45. Um, and the Bills are top five in rushing defense. So believe it or not, the Clyde is able to rush for more than 45 yards in this game. Hmm. Will he rush for more than five, 45 yards? This one in your I'm going to say I believe it. I think he's going to have a big game. I think he has a chance to show up because he knows it's a primetime game and anything less than that could result in him not do, uh, helping well in his standing with the team moving forward. I think it can happen. I mean, I think it can happen. We've seen bursts from him in the past, and then we see games like last week where it seemed like he was moving in slow motion. Um, I, I guess I could say, yeah, it could happen. Um, any given Sunday. I mean, is the probability there? It should be. It's low. It's low, but it should be there. Mm-hmm. What do you my, think? My answer is sort of twofold. One, we know the Bills pass rush is electric. Mm-hmm. And what's a great way to prevent teams from teeing off and trying to hit your quarterback? You run the football. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we saw what the offensive line was able to do against the Buccaneers, another team that was just trying to tee off and hitting Mahomes. So I think there's a couple of reasons there is that I think this, this, uh, I think this is going to be an energized offensive line. And I think that it benefits the chiefs to run the football a, a little early in this game, just to prevent their pass rush to just teeing off and just saying, I'm going to go get the quarterback mm-hmm. because if you're able to run the ball effectively towards the beginning of the game, it can slow down that pass rush, which will give Mahomes time to mm-hmm. be able to hit the ball down the field for some of those big shots later in the game. That's fair. That's fair. fair. That's fair. So we've all got Clyde going for more than 45 yards in the mm-hmm. uh, rushing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So those are all of the, believe it or not. Uh, I think we have points. How many points do you guys, what's the final score going to be? I think I went last. 
against the Raiders. So I'll go first this time. I I've got the score 44, 41 chiefs. Like I said, I think this is going to be a high scoring game. I think this is going to be a pretty close game up until the end. And I feel like really that last quarter, there's just going to be a lot of points scored again. Um, I don't really see either defense being able to stop either offense. Hmm. I'll say I'm going to go 38, 28 chiefs. I think the Chiefs are going to be able to get a couple stops when needed, and they're going to be able to force a couple turnovers. I feel like that's going to be the difference maker. If they can force turnovers, I think they can win this game by 10. Okay. Well, I've been thinking about this for certain reasons, keeping my mind moving, and I thought about the injury side on the Bills, with the what-ifs on the injury side with the Chiefs, and who can fill in on our side. And I think if Orlando Brown – plays up to his potential or how he should be playing. Um, Let's just take away last week completely or maybe a couple other games that he played poorly in. (laughs) I I think this could be a 10 point swing and I have it 44 to 38. So I'm bad. That's where I think I'm at. 40, I'd say 44, 36. That's where I think I'm at right now. All right, that's fair. That's fair. I will say this. If this was in Buffalo, I'd be choosing the Bills. And I know that might upset some people, but I, I'm not just picking the Chiefs because I'm a Chiefs fan. I think if this was in Buffalo, I think the I think the Bills get the edge there. I do okay. believe in home field advantage, and I do believe in momentum. And I think being an arrowhead really is enough. Um, we actually didn't talk about this, uh, is that this is the first time Patrick Mahomes has been the underdog at Arrowhead stadium in his career. Yeah. Um, so I think not only do, do I believe in momentum players talk about momentum coaches do and the betting Mm -hmm. markets believe in it. So I really do think if this was in Buffalo, that there would be, this would be uh, the bills game, uh, the bills to, to lose. Well, here's the Um, thing. And I, I'm going to, it's a great segue because with Mahomes, all of that talk and all of that, you know, if you make him the underdog in any way, that just fuels him more than any quarterback I've ever seen. He doesn't get as frustrated as Allen does. Everybody knows that. And when Allen gets really frustrated, he tends to throw errant balls, maybe not make the best decisions. Um, especially if he's got a lot of pressure on him, which we've done to him in the past. And that's really pissed him off. I mean, look what he's throwing balls at people. He's done a lot of different things. So I would venture to say, even in Buffalo, with the way we play on the road, we, I mean, look at Mahomes' record on the road. I mean, just look at it. Look how many points he puts up on the road, or that team does Mm -hmm. in general. Even with the horrid defense that we had, you know, not last year, but the year before and the year before that, our defense was not great. And it's like when he's on the road, it's almost like they just want to embarrass people in their own home. They put up more points, it seems like, on the road, and and it's not nearly as close a game, it seems like to me. Mm -hmm. I don't I mean, we've talked about this a million times, Caleb, and it seems like they just play harder on the road than they do at home. I just feel like a lot of their home games is they just play down to the competition. They do. You're right. In the home, like you said, they just come out like you would think at home you'd be fired up. Now, I mean, let's see. I think the one factor we look at is the crowd. Can the crowd be loud and proud like they were last week? I mean, they basically kind of scare the rest of saying, if you do a bad call, (laughs) we're coming after you. And I I think that's kind of good because the Arrowhead mystique is back. People were saying, oh, Arrowhead's loud, da, da, da. it's not like it was anymore. I think what we see now, that's more benefic- beneficial for this team because I believe when that call happened, that was a turning point for this it team was. to win that game. It was. And Andy even said that he, <clears throat> people don't realize how much the crowd played a part, the fans played a part in that game. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe it is a turning point in Arrowhead, but I hope they are able to play as well <clears throat> at home as they do on the road. And they just seem to score more points, in my opinion, on the road. So um, mm-hmm. they, they just come out with a different intensity, a, you know, different fire, a different mindset. I don't know. It just seems to me. But 
anyway, uh, I, I, I still think we're going to win it regardless if I'm a Chiefs fan or not. It can go either way. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. I don't think we're mm -hmm. going to want to repeat of last year. No. And there's not the quote unquote issues that we had last year. Our defense is playing much better than it's played since Mahomes has been here. Mm -hmm. And this is the fact, again, I don't think people realize this is the fastest start to any Spags defense in his, his in the history of Spags being yes. a coordinator. So that is true. Uh, it just to me, I think it's gonna it's gonna be a really good game, but I still think it's gonna be a ten point game. And I'm hoping yeah. Mahomes comes out with that intensity that he's just pissed and he thinks, you know what, mm. go ahead and we're gonna need it. Yeah, count count me out, count us out, do what you want to do, but. I think we're going to see probably eight to 10 different receivers getting mm -hmm. balls. It's not going to be like it was last week. They're not going to come out flat. So mm. that's just my opinion. But um, anyway, guys, anything else? Anything else? I think, we I think that's it. it for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, guys, um, another great show. And uh, we are going to do a giveaway. What? Saturday, Caleb? You Probably that Saturday, 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 Sunday. Saturday. Maybe for the game, too. Something maybe. like that. Yeah. So, um, for everybody that's listening, make sure you hit the notifications button. Make sure you follow Quentin. He's been putting out some really good tweets. And his articles are phenomenal. So, make sure you uh, give him a follow. And um, we will talk to you guys after the game on Sunday. Or maybe during the game. Hopefully we'll have all this live streaming stuff fixed and we can live stream the game. That would be phenomenal to live stream the Bills game. We'd love to do that. So I know, Caleb, you are not going to be here. Um, Fortunately, a friend's sadly, wedding. He's I'm, going in, to I'm in the wedding. Sadly, he says he's, the TVs he's, will be out. Yeah. And so. um, I'm going to figure out how to watch this game somehow. Even if while they're at the altar, I'll have an earbud and not. Um, I'll be paying attention. <laughs> I know JP will be texting me, but. Um, you know, I will. So I'm, you're going it'll to be a, a good wedding. game. Yes, yeah. uh, one of my friends. This is, is getting... No, 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 no. Here's the thing. This is your friend's fault. You don't feel bad about. I'm in the wedding party, though. I yeah, I'm so? sorry. So, Vincent, I, I... <laughs> first of all, just tell your friend that you have a hearing, new hearing problem. Okay, they make I can't some do ear... that, Quentin. They make some earbuds Quentin. that look exactly like a hearing. Aid. I will say, I have not missed a Chiefs game since the Chiefs played the Dolphins back in 2017. And I have watched pretty much every game live. I will find a way to watch this game live. Believe it or not, Caleb will watch this game live. Can we all agree with that? Will Caleb uh, we watch can. this game live? We can. You know what? I, I will find a way. I, I was told TVs it. will be on the cart. There will be TVs out in the room. So I will find a way. I promise you that, Quentin. You know I what I should have done? I should or I will be listening to it in the ear, but I, I guarantee you, I will have something. You hey, Mitch these, Holtis does a great job. You see these headphones right here? Yeah. Yeah, these Bluetooth ones, yeah. they're going to be in my pocket and one's going to be in the right ear. <laughs> well, you know, I, I was thinking uh, during that little Amazon Prime thing, they do have those glasses that you can wear that, you know, have the little TVs in them and you can hook your Bluetooth <laughs> them to your phone. So uh, watching it like, oh, I should have got you a set. <laughs> uh, it's all right. I appreciate yeah. it. But no, it's going to be, uh, it's gonna, it'll be fine. I'll, I'll find a way. And I guarantee you, I will be refreshing my phone. Even yeah. while I'm eating barbecue, that's supposed to be served at this, so I can't wait. Well, <laughs> so. uh, you know what, man? We'll miss you, but enjoy yourself and have fun mm -hmm. and just keep good vibes going. Hey, this is the only Chiefs game I'm missing. I'm telling you that. You know me. I haven't I missed a game in years. So I know. I don't know how I'm going to handle not having your calls, you know, and my calls back and forth. I guess I'll have to. I'll find a way to call you. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, the text will be there, and I'll, mm -hmm. you know, I'll call Quentin, yell at him, and call up Fizz and yell at him. and you know, throw out mm -hmm. some dirty language and maybe try not to break things if it's going the wrong way. <laughs> I think you need to get one of those foam bricks. Yeah, so I do. Throw your TV. <laughs> yeah, I need one. Um, I just got this new 14 Pro Max and I haven't gotten the case yet. And I've been yeah, you don't want to break that. I don't want to break that phone. Um, it's a nice phone. It does a lot of things. If anybody would need, if you do, if you are thinking on getting a new phone, this thing does everything. Um, pretty amazing phone. I, I was, you know, and I, I, I've had, you know, Caleb, I've had the same mm -hmm. phone for like three years now and it's been Those over. iPhones after a while, they'll just wear out on you. Oh, they Especially do. Especially if you use them a lot. Oh, hey man, you, you can't say, whenever we're on speaker, 
give Stacy some crap because uh, <laughs> her phone's eight phones behind. So mm, um, I will. I will. So got to uh, upgrade. Yeah, she's got to upgrade at some point. Uh, I I, almost, I think I've got her convinced. I'm not sure, but um, I'm close. The home button's got her thrown off. If it doesn't have a home button, just can't use it. I don't know what it is about that thing. I will say the Androids a long time ago got rid of their home buttons too. I so I know. It's just like one of those things. But regardless, it's going to be a great game this weekend, and I will find a way to contact people. Don't worry. Yep. I will yep. find a way. Well, hopefully – um we'll, we'll have the live streaming thing fixed and i think it's fixed now actually where everything is going live and we're going to be on a bunch of different um platforms i think 11 different platforms so uh anybody that may not get the game you can actually listen to it through twitter you can listen to it through facebook linkedin even for that degree um twitch whatever you guys prefer and there's going to be some other streaming apps that will be on with that being said, um, everybody, I hope you have a great Red Friday and uh, get pumped up for this game. Get loud, Arrowhead. Please get loud. Make these guys deaf. You know, make them deaf. Do not allow them to hear any play. I want to see a couple of delay game penalties. Yes. That's what I want to see. I want to see that. And, uh, oh, before we go, let's just put this out there really quick. Russ cannot cook. Okay, he has to have a chef at his house because he does not cook. He burns water. So I'm going to say it now. They don't win more than five games. I said last in the division. Wow. Yeah, they don't. That, win that's for the record. Games. For the record. Yeah, yeah you, you did. did. You did. You did. And I actually had the Raiders last in the record after they dumped every player they had. I can't see it anymore. Um Russell the Raiders Wilson, will somehow may be able to sneak into the playoffs somehow, I, possibly. I, mean, I think it's going to probably just end up being Raiders, Chargers. I mean, I'm sorry, Chiefs, Chargers, uh, Raiders, and then the Broncos. And we'll be really surprised if Russell Wilson's still there after. I mean, that could, that's going to unravel. He's got players that are breaking helmets. They got, he got paid $260, 264000000 million. They're going to have to keep him. <laughs> I don't know. know. They're, they're that's do. cap. And they have. Is, they have no draft picks. They got rid of. Two they first sold rounds, two their souls rounds. for that guy. For not up. Wow, man. Uh, after great time to be a Chiefs game, fan. Holy yes. mother, man! After watching that game last week, I was thinking, wow. I mean, his entire offense hates him. And mm-hmm. it, look, you either got to be a really good guy or a really good player. Mm-hmm. You can't be. And I'm not saying Russell Wilson's a bad guy. He's just very arrogant. Mm. So when you're arrogant and then you're playing horrible, you're not, you don't have any friends in that locker room and mm. you definitely don't have a fan base. So yeah, he's got to switch something up. He's got to switch up the, you know, uh, you know, Mr. What is it? Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Unlimited. Unlimited. Mr. Unlimited. And he's got to stop doing everything three times because Apparently, when he does them three times, it's losses. So we really have to, or missing wide open wide receivers. So he's going to have to change something up really quick because I don't see them winning more than five games. Mm. Ah, okay. With that being said, we will wrap this one up. We will talk to you guys on Sunday. Everybody uh, have a great Red Friday again and put us on notifications. Peace out, everyone. See you next time, Chiefs Kingdom. <laughs>